my name is Jason Anderson. I just started this school not too long ago, so I'm pretty new to school as well. Too much of that. Yeah, so starting as a kind of data, nothing better than starting a new job with tons of data that hasn't been fully explored yet and haven't been. So it'll be fun. But what is school? So, as Brian mentioned, we're a community platform. So, we get to provide a way for uh, community members to start up a group, invite members, build vibrant communities. And one of the fun things is that one of our company values is let's have fun. And we push this into our product, which goes to the community members, which goes down to um, their members of their groups. And just, it's a really cool platform to be on. So some examples, just throw it out here. In the bottom left, uh, we've got Sam, who runs an art studio for 200 plus uh, individuals, teaching them cool art techniques, ways to uh, take their art to the next level. Then we've got someone you may have heard of, Jason Carullo, more on the celebrity side, helping artists, the next generation of artists, uh, get to the next level. And then something more near and dear to my heart, which is Dina, probably more for you guys as well. Uh, we've got Will, who's a Microsoft, Microsoft graduate, uh, educator, he's got a lot of YouTube stuff, but also in school, has a really cool school community um, if you're at all interested in doing that. We do not have a quick house one, though, so someone needs to take up the idea for sure. Cool. All right, why well, quick house? So, about two years ago, obviously I wasn't there, uh, but Daniel, our illustrious CTO over here, uh, was in the search for finding something that could be a dedicated analytics solution for us. We needed to scale about 100 plus million records a day going in for our telemetry systems, we didn't have much of the ingestion, uh, and then on top of that, I passed queries. So, with the traditional system, we were just everything in Postgres. So, we had our transactional system there, we've got one out to put analytics in. There. You know, it works. It's just kind of slow, unless you do a lot of optimization work. So, on the search, we found ClickHouse, uh, went from being able to just load data that we had in Postgres over there, and we went from minutes for analytic queries down to seconds without really much uh, optimization effort. So, pretty big win there. Uh, we've been on it for two plus years, and we're slowly increasing the scope of the use cases. Uh, so, I'll talk a little bit about those use cases. I'd say the main one right now is real-time observability of all of our systems. Uh, we're expanding into experimentation as well, so you can test things uh, and think about it. And then behavioral analytics as well. We want to try to limit the friction our users have getting on the platform and while they're there. Uh, we did that by uh, using ClickHouse data in order to power all that analytics. So first up is Grafana, is our one single pane glass for all the new in our system, and a lot of the data we have populated the tiles in there is from ClickHouse. So, if we have questions about the front end, are we having any load issues, those things, those we can all see uh, through these dashboards. You take a look at our back end servers, all of our instrumented and sending telemetry data as well into ClickHouse. And we have, uh, I would say, not super optimized views yet, but we have really needed to build a whole lot. We talked about projections, which are relatively new, materialized views. I think we're probably getting the size where we're starting to consider them more and more. Uh, but so far, so good on all of the use cases we have with regard to real time uh, analytics. So, just an example here, just to show hands, people are using their on today. Yeah, so cool. Uh, next use case that we have is experimentation. So we're using a tool called Growthbook. If you've heard of things like Optimizely or WatchDirectly, we also have some A/B testing uh, capabilities. The idea is that we want to segment population that's hitting our site, and we want to run the control, which is like the way things are currently, against a variant, which is the new implemented feature or the new implemented view that we want to see if it's better or not, uh, given some conversion metric. Maybe we're trying to get people to comment more, or we want to have people be able to sign up easier as a conversion metric. So if you look at this uh, trifecta here of technology, we've got our school platform, uh, which is running the websites, the back end, and that will pull experiment configuration down from the book. So as we have an experiment we just did recently for, uh, for an example, we're doing a landing page optimization for one of our school game uh, programs that we have. So we want to make sure people understand what the games are, we understand how you get started, and we're trying to optimize uh, that initial sign up flow. So we pull down the experiment, there's two variants, there's what we have right now, and the new page. The front end then makes a decision on what to show based on that document. 
Uh, we then sent this experiment viewed event in the ClickHouse. This is kind of the, what experiment you belong to. So that lives in our uh, user actions events table there in ClickHouse. We then have all the other existing telemetry we're already sending to ClickHouse already available there. So if you've done a sign up, if you're making uh, comments, posting uh, things on there, that's already in ClickHouse, which is great. You don't have to like reset that into optimizing or somewhere else. GrowthBook then is an open source tool that can run stacked engine queries on top of that data. So it knows about experiment view, it knows what buckets you're in, it knows the order of operations, right? If you've seen multiple variants, obviously you should just leave from the experiment for whatever reason. Uh, but then it's able to just query directly in ClickHouse. If ClickHouse was fast enough, we didn't have to do anything, um, kind of being here, uh, to give us uh, experiment results. Obviously, you start your experiment, which slowly leads more converges to static. Uh, and then you can make better business decisions on that. So a key piece of our uh, experimentation pipeline. Any questions? <laughs> Positive. Uh, yeah. So you've got an arrow from somewhere into ClickHouse. Mm -hmm. What what does that arrow represent? Yeah, so there's a lot of there's a couple of complexity things here. Uh, we have a front end client, so web page, it's sending telemetry to our telemetry server that we have. And that then proxies it into uh, a couple of places, but one of the primary ones is ClickHouse. So that's kind of just typing it through as kind of a one spot in the client. So we're not sending a ton of traffic to the client, but then sending it to the different analytic systems that we need to be the ClickHouse. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit more about what a stats engine query is? Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of, like, if you think of like experimentation and what that is, I would say at the, the core of it is how many people are in, how many people saw the existing page, and then how many people did the thing we want wanted them to do, and there's a percentage conversion. And then you say, how many people saw the experiment that they're in, and then how many people did the thing we wanted them to do. And so we're just basically comparing those to see if the variant is actually better than the control, in which case we can switch to it, maybe it's worse, and we know now, and we can try something else. Quick follow-up, you mentioned something about um, people being in a state where they saw multiple variants and you wanted to exclude them. Mm -hmm. uh, is, does the stats engine query look at the cardinality of a person and variants to make a determination on if they can proceed? Yeah, exactly. It's, we're not going to prevent the user behavior. This is done after the fact. And we're just going to either include them because they're a, kind of a pure test case where they only saw one and then the action or not. If for some reason they saw something like, oh, and they went to the test off and we can link them together and say, oh, we actually they're supposed to both. We'll just exclude them from the experiment uh, data-wise, not that they're seeing anything different on the website. One more follow-up, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know we can uh, get to it. Yeah. It seems, at first I thought you were saying that you were making a decision at the request time to make a determination on if they had seen multiple variants, but it seems that you're saying that if they've seen multiple variants, you're just excluding them. Yes, exactly. Okay. So we bucket them in real time, but all the analysis stuff happens after the fact of the okay. weeks that are going Thank you. Yeah. Cool. I'll probably hold it and then we'll get back to the end. Uh, cool. So the, the last use case here is behavioral analytics. So this is trying to understand what our users are doing on our site so we can help reduce the friction in whatever they're experiencing uh, to make the time more enjoyable. So this is an example. This is the sign up flow. Um, we have a couple of versions depending on if it's paid or not, just standard file type stuff. Um, but what we do is uh, send an telemetry event for each part of it so we have some good visibility on where people drop off. So let's say people are good at the visit page, they see it, they're like, cool, I want to join the group. And like maybe 80% of people join the group. But then maybe user account creation has some complexity to it or whatnot, maybe we're asking too many questions and the drop off is like 50% of that. Well, now we know. And so what we're able to do is send telemetry events for each part of our funnel, and then all that goes into ClickHouse, and then have funnel queries on top of ClickHouse that will show us the drop-off. You can do funnel charts in Grafana. You can do slices and segmentation of those funnels. So let's say, now I want to see this funnel with mobile, and we can run those queries to try to figure out that like, maybe the behavior in general is this, but on desktop, it's actually good, and we want to keep it that way from the desktop view, but we want our reactive site to be this uh, in the mobile version. So this is the, the funnel uh, optimization. We do a lot of other things um, in terms of analyzing user behavior on the site, and we do that all just through our existing uh, telemetry system. 
Cool. All right, a couple lessons learned from here. Uh, these are mostly from the two months I've been here as we're looking at expanding new spaces. Uh, but one, one main thing, and some of this can be fixed with projections and things that you're talking about, but when you're initially creating your tables, try to have a decent understanding. Obviously, things change and maybe you end up using it for something you don't intend to, but have a decent idea of like what the purpose of this table is going to be. Are we collecting data for analytics? Or are we just trying to have um, some sort of other use case for it? I don't know. But when you decide what your table is going to be, you want to set up your keys and your partitioning um, according to that. Because it can't be done after iteration, you can't change it, you have to do some downtime, move things over, that kind of stuff. So if you can, just put a little thought up front to save you some headache. Um, the next one related to this is we had a, in our key a date timestamp 64.3, which basically means there's no current length. The cardinality is crazy. Uh, so it doesn't really work well for an index in the key. Um, it goes to the last point about quick breath, the cost reps being awesome. Uh, but they're like, you know, you should probably use start of hour at the max. So take your date timestamp um, if you want to do indexing based on date there, and you start of hour early if that makes more sense uh, to reduce the cardinality of your indices to make them more effective. Um, the next one here, uh, we're using QuickHouse Cloud, and one thing that we found out is when we initially set up our instance in 2023, it was on this replicated merge tree, and since then they've moved over to a shared merge tree architecture. And that's something that we have to explicitly upgrade at some point in time. So we haven't done that yet. Uh, we're now in the queue. Apparently, they uh, have some performance increases that will fix some of the things that we've been seeing. So, like, hey, let's get that scheduled and get that up. <coughs> and, uh, yeah, kind of goes to the last point here. Talk to your cloud uh, quick house reps. Uh, they're wealth of all the knowledge. They want to make sure you're successful. Uh, we've had things like this with shared history <laughs> architecture. Uh, change that we need to do, as well as businesses, other tips and tricks. So, communities like this are great. Uh, Quick house reps, also great. Cool. And jump back to questions.